NA1SS. November Alf 1, Sierra Sierra. This is GB4 SPT, Golf Bravo 4, Sierra Papatango, calling and standing by for a scheduled contact with the International Space Station. Over. Golf Bravo 4, Sierra Papatango. This is November Alpha 1, India Sierra Sierra. You're coming in a bit uh, garbled, but still understandable. How me? Over. Around about a year ago in August of 2022, there was an eight-year-old who spoke to the International Space Station from the UK, Matt M0LMK, and also Isabella, who you're a little bit older now, another year on. Uh, last time I spoke with you, you said your one of your goals was to speak to the space station, but then to uh, allow your classmates or your school to do that, and you managed to do that last week. So tell me a little bit about that. We applied for um, what they call a school's contact with the ISS, and uh, we were granted one. So we had uh, 20 students um, on stage asking questions to Jasmine as she flew overhead on the ISS via a direct radio link. Is it hot or cold in space? And if it's hot, how do you keep cool? And if it's cold, how do you keep warm in your spacesuit? Over. Harper, that's a great question. Uh, it is hot when we're facing the sun, and it is very cold uh, when we are blocked from the sun. And so in our spacesuits, actually, we are the only source of heat, our human body, so it's very important we don't get too cold. The only other thing we have is some fingertip heaters on our gloves, and uh, for cooling, we have water that runs through a suit that we wear to help cool us down. Over. We also had... Uh... Uh, Megan Christian, who is a British astronaut working for the ESA, she came and visited the site and she stayed with the school all day. So the children actually got to speak to a reserve astronaut who's uh, just waiting for a mission. Yeah, Meridian News, BBC. Um, we also had some local press there as well uh, for the local press, which was quite good. Um, we also had some representatives from the RSGB, the Radio Society of Great Britain. We had some representatives from Goon Hilly the satellite station down here in the, in the UK, down in Cornwall. And we, of course, had representatives from the Hildestone Radio Society, my own club, um, talking to the children about amateur radio and giving them opportunities and advice and things for, uh, for careers in the future. So it was a really good day, actually, overall. What did your classmates think, Isabella, to, to that? Did they think that was pretty cool? The fact that when my other friend came in, they started clapping, but then they stopped. <laughs> And then when I came in, they all started clapping. I think they were amazed. One of the telling things about how good it was and how engaging it was, was um, the school has quite a lot of students, uh, but the school hall itself is quite small. So we had about 150 people in the school yeah. hall. Uh, and that was a mix of the children from the school that had actually written the questions that were going to be asked. Um, and we had lots of other schools in the classroom as well. Uh, so we had schools, some local schools that were invited to bring pupils along so they could be involved in the event. And we had some parents of the children there as well. Um, but to make sure the whole school could be engaged in it, the school has uh, interactive whiteboards in all the classrooms. So we streamed the entire contact to all the classrooms in the school. And one of the members of staff of the school had a little walk around the school while the contact was going on. Uh, and they said they'd never heard the school so quiet for the children. <laughs> they, they were all just super engaged, watching it, listening. So, yeah, it was. Uh, I think it was very engaging for them. You know, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, really. There are application times for um, talking to the space station, for arranging these schools' contacts. So what you need to do is you need to go to the ARIS website, the A-R-I-S-S -S website, Amateur Radio on the International Space Station. And on there, you'll find out um, when they're accepting applications for school contacts and for which countries and which regions. Uh, then you download the application forms and you fill those in and you send them back off to ARIS. Uh, and that's the easy part done, that's the, that's the simple bit. If you get approved, you'll be told that you've been accepted uh, and you'll be given a, a rough time scale. There won't be any dates yet, there'll just be a rough time scale. You know, it might be within the next six months, it might be within the next year. Uh, then you have to work with your school that you want to do the contact with and you have to provide a, uh, a series of kind of educational events um, that provide the outcomes that ARIS want to see. So they want, to, they want children learning about space, they want children learning about engineering and science and technology, 
They want them learning about amateur radio and how we use amateur radio to communicate. Um, and the way we did that with Isabella's school is we took over one of the after school clubs. They run a science club. Uh, and we took over the science club and we renamed it Space Club for six weeks. And we did six weeks of Space Club um, after school with the children that were actually going to be making the contact. So we learned about radio waves, how radio waves travel. We learned about how your voice is uh, on the radio wave. And, and what material is best to make a satellite yeah, out of? We, um, but the school also got other children involved. So it wasn't just the Space Club children. The school we worked with was an excellent school. They pretty much threw away their timetable for us and, and just delivered all these space-related activities. So we had drama club, uh, pretending to land on the moon and walk on the moon. We had the the art um, the art club. We had them drawing pictures of the solar system and what other planets might look like. Uh, we had, uh, I think, football club did a, 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 a running around on the football pitch, putting them in place of the planets, pretending to orbit each other. They did all sorts of activities throughout the whole school. So it was really, really good. Um, and lots of really good kind of educational outcomes from it. I noticed, I know that some schools use like a tele bridge. So what they'll do is they'll use sort of like a station in the middle to, to do the contact. It's a little bit more reliable, um, and, and a little bit easier to set up, but you had a full system running. Uh, I'm, I'm imagining it was the most stressful 11 minutes of your life, especially as <laughs> Isabella just said, you called and called and called and there was no reply. What was that like? Yeah, I can, I can tell you that I can hold my breath for precisely three calls to the space station. <laughs> Any more on that, and I think I'd pass out. But um, yeah, so we uh, we had a direct link, um, and that was all down to Aris UK. Uh, that was nothing to do with me. Um, we're very lucky here in the UK that we have a, a very good Aris group, um, and they literally rolled in with a with a sixty foot trailer mast and with all the kit, and they set it all up, and they run the entire contact. So they they do all the all the pre-prep, they do all the making sure everything works. Um, they do the on-stage presentation before the contact starts and they get everyone piped up for it um, and they deliver the whole thing. So literally, uh, once we've done, once I've done my bit, once we've done the application, uh, and once the club has delivered the training and, and the, the educational stuff before, Aris come in and do the contact. It was absolutely amazing. Uh, we had a cross-polarization two-meter Yagi so they could change the polarization if, if the signal started fading. Um, all automatically tracked as well. So they were tracking the space station with the rotators. Uh, they had a lovely um, Kenwood TS2000, I think they used, a nice Kenwood radio, um, with an amplifier as well, just to give them a little bit more kick if they needed it. Um, yeah, and they delivered the whole thing. It was absolutely amazing, wasn't it? Really good. Uh, and the nice thing is the children got to come around, and they before the contact happened the day before, the children got to come around and all the children in the school saw all the equipment and they got to ask the Aris team questions about it and what it was doing, how it was working. So again, lots of really good educational outcomes for it. What were some of the questions that you that you asked and your classmates asked the astronauts, um, Isabella? I think one was, are girls better suited to space than boys? Yeah, that was a good question. Is it really true that girls are better suited to space than boys? Over. Rebecca, uh, yes, definitely. Uh, no, I'm just kidding, actually. Um, I think we each have different, uh, as individuals, different things we, we bring to the table and strengths and weaknesses. And so um, I would say both uh, boys and girls uh, can be very well suited for space. Over. I think I would say my advice to anyone that wants to do this kind of thing is um, if you are representing an amateur radio club, or maybe you're just representing amateur radio as an individual, then talk to your school. Go, go to a local school, talk to them, explain what it is that you can do for them, explain the process that you can um, that you can do these applications and you can provide this amazing experience for the children and just see what the schools say. But generally the primary schools, uh, the kind of the eight to 12 age group, eight to 11 age group, they're, they're much more easier to interact with they're much more willing to let you come in and disrupt their timetable as long as they can see clear benefits for the students. So if you've got a child that's at a school, maybe approach the school and let them know that you can provide this kind of opportunities for them um, and just go for it, really. And talk to your local uh, ARIS uh, group as well. Get applying, you know, and, uh, and you too could you could deliver these once in a lifetime opportunities for children and really kind of showcase what amateur radio can do.